Hey, what's up guys? Joker here. Today we are going to be doing our first PC performance review of 2018 with the newly released Kingdom Come Deliverance from War Horse Studios. This was actually a Kickstarter project that began a couple of years back and I remember thinking about backing it but I ended up not doing it. But the game is out today in full release. I picked it up over on CD Keys which I believe you can get it for right now at about $48. If you do want to pick it up I'll leave my affiliate link down in the description below if you do want to save yourself a few bucks but if you do pick it up on Steam for the full price of $60. Of course, you do have the option of getting a refund, and there have been a lot of people reporting bugs and performance issues with this game. I did want to definitely talk about the performance and some things you can do to actually get better performance, but there does seem to be a lot of bugs in this game right now. None that I have personally experienced in the first few hours of gameplay, but that does not mean that they are not happening to pretty much everyone out there. So definitely be aware of that if you want to see a good review on this game. Uh, my buddy Jeremy over at Angry Centaur Gaming or ACG actually did a full in-depth review on this. Very good video if you want to go ahead and check that out. I'll link to it down in the pinned comment below. But as I said, we're going to be taking a look at the performance in this game here. And as always, when we are looking at game performance, I do want to start off in the graphics options menu, go over the settings that are available for tweaking, and also what I was using for my personal testing on the different graphics cards that we are using. So here we are in the main menus right now. We'll go into the graphics options screen where you can set your resolution, change the window mode, and you could choose between some presets for the graphics options. But there is an advanced options in here that we can go into. Uh, you could also show the frame rate if you want, if you're not using a frame rate uh, piece of software. You could set the vertical FOV to as high as 75 or as low as 60, which is kind of narrow, honestly. I do wish there was a better FOV option in here above 75, as it does kind of feel a bit narrow to me. But hey, that's just me. Your opinion could be different. But let's go back here, and no, I'm not going to save any changes. Uh, advanced graphics options. So once we get into there, you can see right now pretty much everything is in here is up on ultra high, which is the highest available preset. However, I have tweaked three different options right here. And the reason that I've done that is because after tweaking with these options for over an hour this morning, this is what I found to give the best performance possible. If you want to play this game on an enthusiast level system with like a 1080 or a 1080 Ti, you'll be able to play it ultra high. If you're playing on something like a 1060 or RX 580 or anything around that area, you're probably going to want to play down around high settings, but definitely tweak these three options first down to high as I saw gains of about 20 to 30 frames per second with minimal visual impact as you'll be seeing on your screen right now. This is on my GTX 1080 Ti rig at 1440p and this is a very demanding game and if you try to get, play the game up at ultra high there are some areas of during my benchmark run in the opening town where I saw drops into the 50s, 40s, there was even this one alleyway where I would see it drop down into the 30s and it was just very taxing. It wasn't like a massive stutter or a lag or anything like that. It was just kind of a gradual um, you know, decline in the performance of the game and these three options right here seem to fix that a lot. Um, not making it completely perfect in some areas like the one alley I had mentioned, but definitely giving a big boost to performance of like I said about 20 to 30 FPS in some areas so those are definitely three options that you're going to want to go ahead and tweak if you are having performance issues and a lot of people over on steam have been complaining about performance issues but they're probably just trying presets and not tweaking options so i would definitely advise you to do that if you pick this game up go ahead and mess around with those settings try to get the best performance that you possibly can as far as the options that we do have in here that we can tweak we've got object quality game effects lighting particles physics post-processing quality, shader quality, shadows, textures, water detail, volumetric effect detail, vegetation, object distance, LOD distance, and vegetation draw distance, as well as motion blur, which I left off for all my testing. I left motion blur off no matter what I was testing on. On the GTX 1080 Ti when I tested, um, since that's my enthusiast GPU, I was using these settings that you're seeing right here with just the three options knocked down to high. And on all of the other cards, I was just testing at high settings all the way down through the, across the options with the exception of motion blur, which I did have turned off. 
Also, I do want to quickly note that this game is supporting ultra-wide day one. Very good ultra-wide support. Apart from the initial splash screens when the game is first opening, the rest of it is in ultra-wide. It's not stretched at all. I was able to play in 3440 by 1440, and I will be showing you some of those numbers later on in the video with my GTX 1080 Ti personal system. But we're mostly going to be focusing on low to mid-range cards throughout the rest of the performance testing. But as I said, later on in the video, we will get into 1080 Ti territory. I'll leave a timestamp on the screen or something if you do want to skip ahead to just check out 1080 Ti performance and ultra wide with 4k and all of that but as I said we're mostly going to be focusing on low and mid-range cards here on this game so for my test setup I was using my i7 7700k build which I keep overclocked at 4.8 gigahertz along with 16 gigabytes of G skill RAM at 32 100 megahertz. None of the graphics cards were overclocked, although I did increase the power limit slider on all of them inside of MSI Afterburner. And of course, I was using the latest drivers from both NVIDIA as well as AMD. So for NVIDIA, that was 390.77, and for AMD, it was 18.2.2. So that is all of the pertinent testing information I believe you need. Um, we went over the settings, we went over the test system. Let's get into the actual numbers here and take a look at some frame rates and averages and what the game is actually running like on these different graphics cards. When it came to testing our mid-range cards, which we'll be seeing in a side-by-side -side comparison right now between the RX 580 and the GTX 1060, both of these cards were able to handle the game pretty well at 1080p on high settings, as this is a very demanding game. If you were trying to play this up at Ultra, even on 1080p, you're certainly going to see some drops down into the 30s and even the 40s, and I do hope that this can get better optimized as time goes on from the developers but as i had kind of said before i didn't see any massive stutters or lag spikes where it was like really jarring and just completely ruined the experience it was just some areas which were unexplainably more taxable than others even though the visuals when looking at it with the high versus ultra settings were just so very very minimal in terms of the visual impact of what i was seeing but back to these two cards right here as i said on high settings right now day one you can expect to average around 60 frames per second, although there will be some parts where you'll come below that. But overall, just still an enjoyable experience playing on either one of those cards. The RX 580 is arguably playing, well not arguably, it's objectively playing the game better. It has a higher average frame rate as well as 1% low. So it looks like AMD is a little bit better optimized right now for Kingdom Come Deliverance. Here's a look at our graph for the RX 580 and the GTX 1060, and I've also included the GTX 1080 in this testing right here, where we are doing all on high settings, all the same settings on these different cards, 1080p and 1440p. You can see the GTX 1080 is handling the game very well at 1080p, getting an average of 100 FPS, while the RX 580 got an average of 68, and the 1060 got an average of 61. At 1440p, the GTX 1080 once again getting an average of 67 FPS, while the RX 580 got 45 and the 1060 got 41, and the 1% lows did come down a little bit from what our averages were, obviously the worst being on the 580 and the 1060 at 1440p. 1% lows there were around 28 for the RX 580, and 1060 was down at 22. So definitely wouldn't be looking to play this game on 1440p at least with the rx 580 and the gtx 1060 although the gtx 1080 will manage to play the game fluidly but you might see some drops down below 60 fps even on high settings so definitely something worth considering if you are trying to pick this game up Next up for our low-end cards, we've got the GTX 1050 Ti as well as the RX 560, both 4GB cards here from NVIDIA as well as AMD, and both of these cards struggled. I only bothered testing them at 1080p because it definitely would not be advisable for 1440p. I would say if you're picking this game up on a card like these, you're definitely going to want to probably drop down to medium. You might be able to keep some settings up at high, like textures and things, but the three big ones, like I had mentioned before in the graphics options overview, are the shadows, the shaders, and the post-processing. You'll probably be able to drop those down to medium or low on these two cards and still get respectable frame rates, at least if you don't mind playing around 30 to 40 FPS. You're probably not going to be getting a smooth 60 frames in this game, but you can still enjoy it at these frame rates. As I was going around this, even though it's a first person game, it's not a first person shooter, so it doesn't require like super precise aiming or anything like that. 
So, yeah, it was an enjoyable experience. I wouldn't even mind sitting down on the couch and playing this game with, like, a controller or a, a lap keyboard or something like that. Um, so, yeah, I think this game would look beautiful on a on the kind of, like, a big screen TV or a or really large monitor if you happen to have one of those. And, yeah, so, something like these cards will be able to play the game, although probably not at the smoothest settings. Go ahead and look at the graph here right now, where you can see the GTX 1050 Ti is running it better than the RX 560, which is not necessarily a point of optimization. The 1050 Ti is just a generally more powerful card than the RX 560. So at 1080p, we saw the 1050 Ti getting an average of 39 FPS, while the RX 560 got an average of 33. And then for the 1% lows, we got an average of 21 on the 1050 Ti, and the RX 560 ended up with just 17 so pretty poor one percent lows for both of these cards but uh yeah still okay and playable either way probably going to want to drop down the settings below high though for both of these gpus and last but certainly not least we have the gtx 1080 ti sitting in a class of its own here where i did test that at 1440p ultra wide as well as 4k you'll be seeing in the side by side here with 2560 by 1440 as well as 4k and 1440p this is all this is on ultra settings by the way with just those three options i had mentioned before knocked down to high and this was on a different setup as well this was actually on my personal system with the 6800k so that's why i'm completely separating these numbers from the other ones as i just want to be clear that this is on my personal system which i just did for the enthusiast out there that might be curious how the 1080 ti is running it especially at much higher resolutions like 3440 and 4 and uh, 4k but 1440p, definitely doable in this game, although you're still going to have some drops down below 60, um, depending where you are, obviously, in the world. But averaging, you know, up over 70 FPS, so still able to run the game quite well, whereas at 4K, as you're seeing, it's definitely down below 60 FPS on these ultra settings with the mix of the few options at high. So you'll probably want to try playing this game at just high settings, on the GTX 1080 Ti, although you will definitely still see some dips down below 60 frames per second since it is such a demanding title and probably not fully optimized yet by the developers. And I hope we do get some patches and some driver revisions in the near future to make this game better because so far I've really been enjoying it. Uh, the voice acting is excellent. Uh, the combat feels kind of weighty and just different from something like, say, the Witcher 3, although it definitely takes inspiration from something like Witcher 3, and the first person perspective in the world kind of feels a lot like Skyrim or maybe Oblivion or something like that, Morrowind. So definitely taking cues from other RPGs, um, you know, in the genre. So yeah, I'm going to look forward to playing this game quite a bit more. But looking at the graph here now for the GTX 1080 Ti, you can see at 1440p, we got an average of 76 FPS and a 1% low of 40, while at 3440 by 1440 ultra wide, we got an average of 63 and a 1% low of 32. And rounding out the list, we have 4K getting an average of 42 FPS and a 1% low of 20 but just to reiterate once again with the 1080 ti only i was playing at ultra high settings with the exception of those three options i mentioned a few times now in this video so definitely take that into consideration as you could probably tweak some settings get a little bit better performance especially if you're looking to play at 4k that's probably something you're going to want to look into doing but I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here, probably play some more Kingdom Come Deliverance, because so far I am enjoying it, despite having to knock down a couple of settings on my 1080 Ti, which doesn't really seem reasonable, because I've seen other many other games like Witcher 3, I think visually looks a lot better than this. So this, this might have better vegetation, um, but that's really about it. Uh, I, think, I think Witcher 3 just looks way better overall than this title right here. But I'm still enjoying it because I haven't had a game like this to play in quite a while, pretty much since The Witcher 3. So I'm a sucker for medieval type RPGs and I like the realism in this one. So I am going to play it quite a bit more. But let me know what you think about the performance down in the comments below. Are you going to pick it up? If you do decide to pick it up, be sure to check out my affiliate link, which I'll leave linked down below, as I said, in the description. It helps me earn a few bucks, helps you save a few bucks, but... With the performance the way that it is and the bugs that this game is having, I would advise most people to probably pick it over uh, pick it up over on Steam so that you have the option for a refund in those first two hours of playing it. And that doesn't benefit me all to tell you that, guys, because obviously I'm not making any commissions if I send you over to Steam. But I just wanted to be very clear that a lot of people are reporting bugs in this game and performance issues. But your mileage may vary, especially if you do some of the option tweaks like I showed you here in this video. 
So I'm going to get out of here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to leave a like on it down below and subscribe if you're not already. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Ta-ra.